G'day, I'm Ash, I hope you're all doing fantastically well, welcome yourselves back to War Thunder. I know it's been a little while since I made a War Thunder video, but I wanted to talk to you specifically about War Thunder and its health in general. One thing that concerns me about War Thunder's longevity is the fact that we definitely know that more things are coming to the game in the near future. What do I mean by that? Well, it's been confirmed that Rank 7 aircraft will be a thing either this year or the year after, so we'll probably see an immense amount of change in that direction. But War Thunder as a whole, I just haven't really been feeling the game. I sort of took a little bit of a break. As a result, I've killed any sort of viewership that I that I have. And I started thinking about doing other games. It's not that I don't necessarily want to do War Thunder. It's, it's one of those games that you play for a, a long period of time, and then you just stop and drop. And I think it's really a bit of an issue and a bit of a problem with, with the way that War Thunder works. If your player base is only playing for 40 minutes, you should be making game-informed decisions. And if the statistics reflect that, then... Well, that's kind of a bit of a problem, isn't it? If most people are only playing for 40 minutes, it means they're only playing their favourite vehicles, which in turn means that people are only doing this because, well, they li like the game, but there's no other alternative. Now, I've covered those things in other videos before, but you must understand how like, frustrating it is for the player base, and especially the content creator community, who have access to direct lines of communication with War Thunder itself, when the very few things the community is near unanimous about is the need for decompression. And, well, they continue to ignore this issue, but not only that, but implement the precise opposite effect and ruin battle rating spreads in general, when it is abundantly clear how necessary it is, as many content creators have said before, it would cause no real detriment to the matchmaker, even at least populated times, and vastly improving the experience of players across the board. Decompression is something that we need in War Thunder. And I know a lot of creators have been talking specifically about battle rating changes, and obviously the whole decompression versus compression, and how game balance plays into effect. But, have they ever tried playing during time zones when there's less players? I play throughout the day in, a, in Australia, and top tier match queue times are consistently some of the shortest and most guaranteed. However, uh, the, the lack of BR de decompression by claiming that the game cannot support the BRs of 11.0 due to queue times in less populated time zones is arbitrary and quite bullshit. Most people are playing rank 5 and 6, and that also plays into the whole entire, I guess, ordeal. If you're not playing at a higher tier, you're not necessarily playing War Thunder, which indicates to me that the player base has no incentive to go play lower tiers. This is a little bit of an issue. It has caused not only just a major shitstorm within the community, but a lot of creators have come together when, when normally they would have been divided on certain subjects, and they have basically told us that, again, it is incredibly strange for this sort of thing to be happening. Compression is not the answer. We've been talking about this for years. Thousands of creators have probably talked about this. Well, it's probably in the good 50 or 60 creators by now who have talked about this potential issue. And Smin1080p, also known as Scott, said the devs do not keep uh, the top BR at given level for arbitrary reasons. It's not in anyone's favour to have overcompressed BRs, as it becomes a viable trial or implement an expansion, as it always will be done. But all feedback on the matter is well known to the devs. That kind of is an arbitrary statement in a way, because queue times are already long enough. And, as another creator went on to go to say, meaning no offence, but this is just a lie. It's abundantly clear to nobody who understands your co company's business model that arbitrary forcing and a longer grind will incentivize more people to give up and open their wallets in order to skip it. Over-compressing the BRs accomplishes this by making the, only the top vehicles of a given rank competitively, while simultaneously shitting all over their counterparts in a single given BR step beneath them for example let alone three ergo you know monetary gain for the company at the expense of the health of the game incentivize Garjan to have hugely compressed brs when it's not necessary it's quite clear that this is the company's main goal and yeah there are a positive the f4c from going down from 10.7 to 10.3 uh, and while the f4c's performance has been knocked down for you know quite a while now the gun pods were actually given weight and drag many months ago compared to the introduction and it's inferior to the f4e in just about every metric the f84f from 87 to 83 that is generally you know a good change 
The F86 F25 was also 8.7, although apparently that's going down to 8.3 as well. Makes sense that the F84F is going down. The MiG-21 PFM, similar performance to the F-13, but trade the NR-30s for the GSH-23. More fire rate, worse velocity, about the same amount of trigger time, and the KH-66s are bloody brilliant for close air support and what have you. There's a heap of other changes. I'm going to leave an article down below uh, to a forum post which explains all the significant changes. And this was a data mine done by Gazabi Hun, who posted it about three hours ago as a recording this video. There's the SU-7B and the BKL, which are going down in battle rating. The B-57s and the Canberras are going up to 8.3 and realistic. The F-84 is all going down to 8.3. The MiG-19S is going to, to 9.7. That's all MiG-19 variants. The Jaguar and its counterpart is going down to 9.7 as well. Some other things. The G-91YS finally is going down to 9.7. There's a whole heap of other things. The Vatua 2B is going up to 9.7. It seems like they're basically filling out the tech trees and readjusting things as they see fit. And I mean, it makes sense. But at the same time, they're compressing the battle ratings rather than actually expanding them. And I guess that's really where the issue lies. We have got confirmation that Rank 7 is available and coming to War Thunder this year, which indicates several things. One, they are compressing the battle rating spread to allow for higher tier vehicles, maybe at the 11.0 battle rating. That's the hope, at least. But having said that, they're, they're not doing themselves a favor in any format at all. Because get this, the A7D is going from 9.7 to 9.3. I don't know who thought that was a particularly good idea, considering it can carry AIM-9Js. It already has gun pods for days, and that thing is incredibly useful when fighting, you know, head-ons and, and going for BERT kills, etc, etc. Which, again, shit is getting down-tiered all over the place, which then forces more compression. It's like when people said that 8.7 is going to die with these changes go through. We didn't mean don't move stuff down to 9.7 and not moving the 8.7s down to 9.3. We wanted, or sorry, 8.3. We wanted proper distinguishing between the battle ratings. We wanted at least some form of input and availability for us to spread the battle ratings so that there is a more even fight, rather than a competitive team death match that focuses on a hell of a grind and something that is not necessarily worth it in the long run. So, is it a matter of BRD compression? or compression, or is it the fact that they won't separate the battle ranks even further into rank 7 like we probably should, and expand the battle ratings from there? I don't know. It always seems to be a problem with War Thunder when you go two steps forward and then they always take one back, because this battle rating system has been changed three different times due to community feedback, and even then it is still an incredibly divisive topic. For example, the CL-13 Mark IV and the Venom are staying at 8.7, and the CL-13B Mark VI are staying at 9.7. <laughs> the Venom is staying at 8.7. I'm sorry, but that aircraft was useless and has been useless since the introduction of the fucking bastard years and years ago. This is not the answer for change. Compressing things is not the answer. You might think it is, but there is no player incentive to go play lower tiers, especially in BR ranges that are over-compressed, because there are aircraft that outperform those particular types of craft in every single manner or way. There is no point for you to go play lower tier aircraft when you can just unlock something higher or open your wallet and get, you know, a, a pay to win broken vehicle or flavor of the month vehicle that has its battle rating changed or some thing about the bloody vehicle that makes it more broken than anything else. Do you remember the days when the problems with jet battle ratings were as simple as the CL-13 Mark V was 5% better than the F-2 or the MiG-17? Do you remember when turn fighting was a thing? And do you remember the net positivity that the creators and the wider community gave when the MiG-19 and the F-100 were in the game with air to air missiles and, and being the first supersonics? I feel sorry for the PR team, I feel sorry for the creator management team, I feel sorry for those who have to deal with the wrath of our basic realization that they don't really give a shit about the game in the first place. 
it's they'd have better luck maybe literally review all of the battle ratings from scratch and maybe doing some other important changes or introducing rank 7 stuff or even expanding the bracket to 11.7 or 11.0 or just go by even numbers and go back to tiers 1 to 20 except oh, I don't know there's so many solutions here and so many options it's just so many vehicles so many problems you could go in circles with War Thunder's issues and with that, I guess about ends it. Thank you very much to the Patreon supporters, Sniper, Southern Bear, Bitwise. Thank you very much to all the Twitch subscribers as well. And to some of my other creative friends for helping me d digest what the shitstorm it's been over the last few weeks. I appreciate your faces. War Thunder content will be resuming, but at a limited pace. There will be some changes and I'll explain all these things in Crash with Ash uh, later uh, in the week. One thing I ask of you, be nice to each other in the comments section, lads. Anyway, my name is Ash, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio!